When I was standing backstage, I did the same thing I did when I was 17 years old, making my first stage appearance. I checked my fly. <laughs> I actually did, and I had the same, same feeling I had then. I'm a better actor than any of you can know, because if I can get away without fainting or having an attack, then I'm acting. Now, my hands, what do you feel? They're sweaty. Sweaty. Okay, I'm gonna try to act like I'm not, my palms are not sweaty. Thank you, sir. That's it. <laughs> when something like this is thrown at you, your hands sweat, your chest throbs, and you're very nervous, and I am that. But I am also, I am also very thankful that I've lived the kind of a life that, that allows me to have a family like that and an evening like this. Um, uh, usually, uh, I look up there and I, I remember one thing. How, why is it that I'm here? How did I get to this place? There are two, maybe three people involved with my, my becoming who I am today. One is Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and the other is my brother Charlie. Franklin Delano Roosevelt instituted a thing called the WPA, and my brother Charlie came to me. I was working in a machinist shop, and a machine shop fixing hat machines. I was getting $8 a week, and I was 17 years old. I had graduated high school at 16, and my brother Charlie came to me and said, look at this thing I found on the Daily News, the WPA project, a Works Progress Administration, funding the arts, giving a chance to people in the arts to, to work. There's a dramatic school that is for free downtown in Center Street. Why don't you go there, Carl? I had no idea. I always could be funny, I could tell jokes, I could, I could do voices, but I didn't have any way to become an actor until my brother Charlie showed me this thing. And because Charlie and a government that cared about the people, I am here today. I thank you. to say what, one more, I'll use my two and a half minutes better spent do, doing this, what I'm about to do. My brother Charlie is my older brother by three and a half years. He was in World War II. He was in 11 major battles from the invasion in, in, South, in uh, North Africa, from the uh, Rommel invasion to D-Day to liberating Dachau, 11 major battles. He's still with us today. And, He deliberated Dachau, and he married Ilse, who was in a camp in Czechoslovakia and Germany, and they had been married to they had two children. And I, 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 I want to salute my whole family, because they do that. They do that. Uh, in order of birth, my son Rob and his wonderful family, Michelle, my two grandchildren, Jake and Nick, Romy, who is in bed because she's two and a half, I thank you for coming and I thank you for being in my life. You're making my life a lot better by making me a grandfather, you guys. And my daughter, Annie, the psychoanalyst, poet, painter, and playwright, everything with a P she does, Annie Reiner. <laughs> And our younger son, Lucas, he's a fine artist, a writer, a director. He's got a movie called The Gold Cup, which is now making the rounds. And his wonderful wife, Maud, and my little red-headed granddaughter, Livia. Livia, Maud. Oh. And my wife's nephew and my nephew and manager and Seinfeld's nephew and manager, George Shapiro. <laughs> George Shapiro. And 
And the woman that when I asked her to marry me said yes. That moment was probably the moment that made it all possible. She's the great influence in my life. She has always been smarter than me. I'm catching up lately. But <laughs> my wife, the jazz singer, who at age 60 decided she can sing jazz, and her fourth album, has, fourth CD has come out, her fifth CD is about to come out, Ukulele Mama, Estelle Reiner, Ukulele Mama. I'll have what you're having, Mama. <laughs> anyway, Mark Twain, I'm sure was, uh, somebody asked me, how do I feel about getting the Mark Twain Award? And I, uh, what would he say? What would Mark Twain say? And, and I, 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 out front, somebody asked me this question, and I said, he probably would say, I'm so pleased <laughs> that one of the people in my ethnic persuasion <laughs> has won this award. You know, many people don't know that uh, I'm at least part Jewish. <laughs> you look at the name Samuel. Samuel suggests possibly a Jewish name, and uh, the name Clemens it could possibly have been uh, Kleminsky. We're not sure. We're not sure. <laughs> anyway, I'm very proud that one of our one of our people has got the. No, that's it. Uh, I tried. I tried. I tried. <laughs> anyway. What I really want to say is the reason I'm here, and I know this, this is not, this is no bull. I'm here because I stood on the shoulders of some giants, starting with Sid Caesar, supporting Sid Caesar? No, he supported me, I stood on his shoulders. Steve Martin, I stood on his broad shoulders. Dick Van Dyke, his broad shoulders. Mary Tyler Moore, her great legs, not the broad shoulders, <laughs> yes. But every one of the people I, who were up, up here today, I didn't stand on any of their shoulders, but I want to thank them for coming here and help us to celebrate this evening. But the truth of the matter is, because I was very, very fortunate, for one reason or another, to work with these people, they made my life. There's no question about it. I'm standing here because Sid Caesar and Mel Brooks and Mary Tyler Moore and Dick Van Dyke and Steve Martin were in my life. That's the truth. And that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. By the way, by the way, I was, I, the stage manager at, or, or before said, uh, that uh, I shouldn't try to pick this up, it's very heavy, we'll send it to you. Steve Martin will attest to this in f Spain, in Coruña, the Coruña Film Festival. Dead Men Don't Wear a Plaid won the award as the best comedy, I as the best director, and they said, we'll send you the award. It was a very large award. Did they send it? Did I get it? Never. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.